Hello and welcome to the SD20 News Desk. I'm Michael Hakarainen, broadcasting virtually from Salt Lake City, and I'm joined today by Irene Qualters, who is the Technical Program Chair for this year's conference. Irene, thank you for joining us, and where are you joining us from today? Hi, Michael. It's a pleasure to join you from sunny Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa Fe. So to get started, can you give us a little background about yourself, where you work, and how long you've been with the conference? I have been with the conference for a very long time, starting, you know, more than 25 years ago when I was at Cray Research. Certainly progressed through about 10 years at the National Science Foundation. And since 2018, I've been at Los Alamos National Laboratory here in New Mexico. My whole career, uh, I've been involved in uh, sci various forms of scientific computing, certainly modeling and simulation, various forms of uh, data analytics, and more recently, AI and machine learning. And the conference also has reflected that trend, broadening the various forms of high-performance computing to the uh, very large portfolio we see today. Excellent. And, and speaking of the conference, as the technical program chair, how have you tailored this year's technical program for an, uh, a global online audience? We're a committee. The tech program is a committee of volunteers. And uh, we're more than 450 strong. And so reflecting the breadth and depth of HPC starts with the committee members. And we drew from every imaginal demographic that we could think of geographically, gender, uh, all forms of diversity, both in terms of the intellectual content as well as the reviewers and the committee members. So that has really allowed us to adapt and adjust to what the form that we thought the conference was going to take in the beginning and through the reviews, because we switched from in-person reviews for the tech papers, which is the heart of the program, into a virtual for the first time ever in the history of the conference. And it worked exceedingly well. And that gave us some needed confidence and experience so that when the time came to adapt to a fully virtual conference, we had some experience among the committee about how that would work and how that would work globally. So we've had to make a lot of changes over the last few months because of this pandemic, and you've made changes to the conference. Some of that has required some sacrifices, but there's also been some positives. What do you think are some of the takeaways from the changes you've made that will continue even after the pandemic is over? So uh, there are pieces that are changes that I think are independent of the nature of the conference, and those are the continued progress in uh, trans introducing transparency in addition to reproducibility in the content of, of the program. And we've also been able to maintain and sustain through the help of the community, the breadth of participation globally. So that I, I really thank the community and it's really a tribute to the community that we are, that the submitters have been coming from all parts of the globe and uh, representing every imaginal part of HPC, old and new. And then the other thing is really, we're still learning about how to do things virtually. I do think that the review that we did, the tech pour, what's called the tech pour in June of this year, uh, which we made virtual, um, worked exceedingly well for reviewers and participants in Europe, in Asia, Africa. So I think we'll likely retain that as a tool to allow increased participation, but making that participation robust. I think on the conference itself and the tech program, we luckily had a very good response, a very robust response in the submissions. I think we'll learn a lot as we go through the conference and I'm, I'm eager to have community uh, feedback as we go through that. Excellent, thank you for sharing. You, you said earlier that you've had um, 
many years of experience with the conference. So based on your, your years of experience and seeing the conference change and then see it change so drastically this year, some might say that you have x-ray vision and maybe you can see things that everybody else is missing. What, what, what is it you're seeing? Uh, what are the trends? And you mentioned artificial intelligence and machine learning, but what are some of the other themes that you are noticing on the rise? It's clearly not about any individual's x-ray vision. It's really being able to tap into the richness of the committee. So ensuring that you have representation from early career, from late career, plumbing the, the breadth of HPC allows one to be able to sense and look out more broadly than any individual. And I think thanks to the leadership of the committee chairs, I'm thinking papers, I'm thinking early career, I'm thinking posters, um, being able to give freedom and support for uh, them to reimagine how does a poster session look <laughs> under, uh, uh, under this scenario and what are the themes and how are those themes best re represented? So, Without going into detail, we did reintroduce state of the practice. That had gone away for a while. We really feel that, that uh, there was a big push to bring that back. I mentioned AI and machine learning. The other area that's been very strong this year is in the um, birds of a feather, so-called BOF sessions. And I think as we look into the future, I think there's work to do and we'll be re-examining how we did on the BOF side. We had such a robust response, higher than we had anticipated. And so we weren't able to accommodate as much in the birds of a feather, which is the opportunity for the community to engage with one another. And so I think that as we look to the future, I would say that that's an area we may want to uh, re-examine and make sure that we're optimizing that we're in a space right now technology wise that things are changing very fast from both the industry and from the uh, use of the technology and so the ability to have a forum where community the community can interact and discuss i think we may want to look at at how we do that in the future based on what's been done in the past, but what are the new opportunities? And that's where our early career committee members can help us a lot and, and are helping us. Sounds like this is going to require a lot of collaboration um, and of course communication. You mentioned that you've brought back the state of the practice. Can you summarize exactly what state of the practice means for somebody who maybe is attending the conference for the first time and didn't hear about it in the past? So the state of the practice uh, really appeals to those in the community who are providing the environment and operating the environment in which HPC is interacting with researchers, educators, and uh, as technology is changing, as the opportunities are changing, reimagining that environment and being able to successfully migrate to new areas while supporting existing areas is a challenging proposition. And there aren't that many uh, places where that community can interact among themselves and talk about how, for example, uh, the data from instruments is flowing into the computation and how that's becoming more real time. And, and frankly, how various new forms of technology such as AI are being used to optimize the environment for that community. And so the, the lack of opportunities for that community to engage is really a chance for SC to provide a forum for that group to interact, to share best practices, to talk about potential for new ways of operating. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of people attending the conference for the first time, what advice would you have for any attendee in this year's conference to make the most out of their time and the experience? So I think one of the things that attendees might do is look at what's changed and what new opportunities that brings. So for example, this year, 
we particularly uh, change the registration fees for students. That allows, for example, exposure tutorials and workshops much more broadly than in the past. And it also allows educators to have classes participate as a whole. We're also unconstrained by room size, as we have been in the fire marshals uh, would only allow so many people. This virtual environment allows a greater participation. And so I think the opportunity of uh, the situation of being turned away from a BOF, from a workshop, from a tutorial, from other sessions that are uh, smaller group sessions, that's being opened up. And so as one looks at the program, it looks at the registration fees, there are new opportunities for a, for a broad set of attendees. So I hope uh, people will be able to take advantage of that. Definitely, and another advantage to an online conference or a virtual uh, interface is that unlike a convention center where the rooms have a capacity, you have unlimited capacity. Well, thank That's you so it. much, Irene. Yep. Thank you. It was good to talk with you, Michael. It was excellent. Thank you for your advice and for all of the information and most importantly for not only spending time with us here online, but also all the work that you've put in as the technical program chair to make this a great conference. I look forward to speaking with you again and maybe one day in person. Uh, and to everyone who's watching, thank you for joining SC20 News Desk. Stay tuned for more interviews.